How to Read Guitar Music, Part A Lesson 3, The Crotchet Before we go on to the crotchet, let's just recap the note values we've done so far. And they are the semi-brief and the semi-brief rest, which are worth 4 beats. And the minim and the minim rest, which are worth 2 beats. Now we're going to take a look at the crotchet and the crotchet rest, which are worth one beat. The crotchet note looks very similar to a minim except it's filled in. And like a minim, the tail can either go up or down, either way doesn't make a difference to the value of the note. The general rule is, if it's above the B line, which is the centre line, the tail goes down, and if it's below the centre line, the tail goes upwards. The rest for the crotchet looks rather complicated, but it looks more complicated because of the kind of pen it's been drawn with. However, it's really just a zigzag line with a curl on the end. If we reflect back on the notes we have done, you might be starting to notice a pattern, and that is that the length of the note halves every time. We started with four beats, then two beats, and then a beat, and we'll go on to half a beat and a quarter of a beat, etc. And this is quite an important thing to note because we use it in the time signature. We consider the semi-brief as one note, which is four beats. So a minim, which is two beats, is half a note. A crotchet, which would be one beat, is a quarter of a note. And beyond that, which we haven't done yet, a quaver because it's only half a beat, would be an eighth of a note. And this is the number on the bottom when you're looking at a time signature. So when we look at 4-4 four, four time, we're looking at four crotchets per bar. If we were looking in 3-4 time, for example, we'd have three crotchets per bar. Now, if we're looking at something more unusual, like 6-8 time, you'd have six, and the eight would be quavers in a bar. I know this can be a little confusing, but don't worry about it. You really don't need to memorise it and sit there and try and understand it. You'll get the feel for the different time signatures as you play different tunes. Anyhow, let's get back to the crotchet. And the crotchet lasts for one beat, and the crotchet rest lasts for the same. We'll try some exercises using crotchets, but we'll also include some minims and semi-briefs where they're appropriate. However, with these exercises, they might have the appearance of being faster because obviously now we're including crotchets, which only last for one beat. So, if you find it a little difficult, any of the exercises, just go away and practice them, and then try them with a metronome. Exercise 1 Exercise 1 is a simple chord rhythm exercise and the names of the chords are above the score and the rhythm to be strummed is obviously in the score and this particular exercise has everything we've learnt to date it's got crotchets, minims and semi-briefs another three important thing I need to point out is on the third line there's a repeat and the repeat is covering the entire line so we play line 1, line 2, line 3 twice, and then line 4. I'll play exercise 1 now at 90 beats per minute with a 2 bar introduction, so if you want to play along with it, you can.
Here's exercise one at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction so you can try and play along with it. If you're a more advanced player, or if you're feeling adventurous, here's exercise 1 at 110 beats per minute. Exercise 2 And the first thing I need to point out about this exercise is the bars that look like single notes are actually broken chords or what we call arpeggiated chords and you'll notice that the chord names that appear above the tab and the music are above those single note sections so you make the chord shape and then play the notes individually before going on to the next bar where you strum the chord. And when you see a chord name above the tab, if you're not playing the complete chord in the tab, then you don't have to put down the entire chord shape. You only have to put down the fingers you'll be using. Another thing I need to point out is that there's a repeat symbol. The opening mark is on the first bar and the closing mark is at the end of the second line. So what this means is we repeat the first two lines and then we play the third and fourth line once. Here's exercise two being played at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction so that if you want to join along you can. Here's exercise two again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction.
Now, if 90 beats per minute is too slow for you, here's that exercise again at 110 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Exercise 3 And the first and probably the most important thing I need to mention about exercise 3 is the fact that it's in 3-4 time. So that means there's 3 crotchets per bar. So you won't get any more than 3 beats in a bar. So this tune will be counting 1-2-3, 1-2-3, 1-2-3. Etc., and this is commonly called waltz time. So, the metronome beats I'll be using with this exercise will be at 3 4 time. Another thing to watch out for with this exercise is the two sets of repeats the first line is repeated, and the entire second page. And that's because this is more of a natural piece of music than an exercise. There's also two ways of playing this. You can either play it with a plectrum or you can play it finger picking style. If you're not familiar with finger style or you'd like to learn it, I've got an entire finger picking course up on my website ebooksforguitar.com and you can find it on my YouTube channel in the playlists. And that's quite an interesting course. First of all then, here's exercise 3 at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction and I'll be playing it with a plectrum. Here's exercise 3 again at 90 beats per minute with a two bar introduction and this time I'll be playing it finger style but you can play it whatever style you prefer.
here's exercise three again, this time at 110 beats per minute. I'll play it finger style again because personally I'm happier with that style. Exercise 4 This exercise shouldn't need any explaining. Pretty much everything in there is what you've learnt and there's nothing that's overcomplicated. However, it is worth pointing out, if you look at the first two bars and just look at the tab and then look at the previous exercise and the first two bars, just the tab, they look very similar. However, the rhythm is very different. And this is partly because this tunes in 4-4 time. But also, if you look at the value of the notes, you can see they're different. And this sort of emphasises why it's so important to know how to read rhythms in music. Because you can look at something in pure tab and have absolutely no idea how the rhythm should go. And slowly but surely, as you learn to use the rhythms, you'll find it very useful. So... Here's exercise 4 being played at 90 beats per minute with the usual two par introduction so you can play along with it if you want. And here's exercise 4 again at 90 beats per minute with a 2 bar introduction so you can play along with it again if you want.
As usual, here it is again, but at 110 beats per minute, in case you want to uh, push yourself a little, or you might find the previous ones a little slow. Exercise 5 This week I'm going to do something a bit different for exercise 5. Now the whole point of this course is that you learn to read the rhythms yourself. So what I've done with exercise 5 is I've created a PDF and there's a direct link down below in the description so you don't even have to leave YouTube. And you can either click on the link and print it out now or you can right click it and save it to your device so that you can print it out later or maybe even just look at it on the screen. What I'd like you to do is try and work out the rhythm yourself and practice this exercise. And then I'll play it for you at the beginning of lesson four. And then you can check if you've got it right or not. So basically, you've got some homework. At the end of this video are some metronome beats, but this time it's just the three four time ones because we've never had those before. And we've got three four time at 90 beats per minute and three four time at 110 beats per minute. And these are for exercise two, so you can practice that one. So I'll sign off now before the metronome beats. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it, Please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos and start new courses in the future. To see the ebooks that go with this course, you can view them completely free online at ebooksforguitar.com and you're looking for lessons. And they're there you can view them online completely free. However, if you want to download them and print them, unfortunately you'd have to pay a small donation. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Three four time metronome beats. Firstly at 90 beats per minute and then at 110 beats per minute.